At the moment, I'm a lecturer in international development in the International Water Centre. Um, I'm actually on leave from Monash University, where I also lecture in international development. And for the last few years, I've, I've been teaching about uh, international development perspectives on integrated water resources management, with a particular focus on participation um, and poor people's participation in development. And I've been teaching a unit on community development and integrated water management. Uh, once again, from an international development perspective and very much focused on applied and practical tools and strategies for engaging local people, working with poor people, helping them get organised, helping them find a voice in the whole water uh, development process. Well, there's, there's a few things that are really enjoyable about teaching at the IWC. Um, probably first and foremost are the, the kinds of students that we attract. Um, the, the experience and the skills that they bring, they're often very high quality students. They've often had some experience, um, you know, some professional experience before they come. So they're very highly motivated. Um, they're usually very high performing students and they're very engaged with the course. Um, the other thing that teaching about participation and, and water and community development enables me to actually bring some of those methods, participatory methods, into the classroom um, and to engage students in learning through community development methods. So we try not to give any lectures as such when we're running the course. Rather, we, we run workshops. We, we try and engage students in learning by doing. So doing things like participatory rule appraisal, um, how you might map out community resources with, with ordinary villages in the field, uh, how you might run a workshop with villages to actually help them articulate you know, what, what water and rivers mean to them and how they can um, organise and plan um, to have, have their, their own sort of say in the decision making over those mm -hmm. things. Many of our students um, really enjoy my courses because they are interested in getting a, developing a career in international development, going and working in developing countries um, with some sort of an international development effort. And so, for instance, we've, we've, we've had some international students who've gone back to their own countries in Africa and Asia and are working in that field. Um, we've, we've got a student at the moment who went to work with the South Pacific Commission in, in Fiji and they like to work so much that they've offered her an ongoing job in community engagement in, in the South Pacific and in Fiji. Um, yeah, so, so many of them are going on to really interesting professional careers with an international development or community development focus. What really got me into this sort of research and this sort of academic work was, was the fact that I was always interested in, in rivers and people's relationship to rivers as an aspect of the environment. I've been a, a kayaker since I was a, a teenager. But in the early 90s when I, I got a chance to um, undertake a, a PhD in the area of the anthropology of development, um, it just seemed a natural thing to do to go and look at people's relationship with a particular river in northeast Thailand. Um, and as it turned out, there was a lot of conflict going on. There were large scale development projects. There was industrialization polluting the river. And people were organizing um, and getting together and networking and campaigning in all kinds of new and um, very innovative ways um, in Thailand. So it, actually the, the people that lived along this particular river um, got together to form what became the first nationwide social movement, environmental social movement in Thailand. So that became the topic of my, my PhD and the topic of my first book. Um, and I think as I said before, my, my life sort of revolved around that, uh, that river and, and Thailand ever since. There's two really important motivators or, or two really important areas of satisfaction in, in this work at the moment. Um, and one of them is, is 
constantly being able to explore new ways to engage students and, and find new ways to, to help them learn and to help them learn in ways that will enable them to become more critical, um, will help them learn in ways that will enable them to, to actually change the way we manage our rivers and manage water and our whole approach to water and, and, and development. Um, in other words, a real interest in water for social, in education, sorry, in, a real interest in, in education for social justice and education for sustainability and how we engage with our students to, to do that, to achieve that, to achieve social change. Um, the, other, the other very satisfying and exciting part of the work really is being able to continue my research with ordinary poor villages in places like rural Thailand. Because when it comes down to it, most of my, my knowledge actually has come from them. As an anthropologist, that's, that's been my way of working, spending time with, with ordinary people, people that are uh, often regarded as being ignorant and uneducated um, and actually learning about their local knowledge, their ways of doing things um, and, and trying to promote broader understanding that these people actually have a whole lot of knowledge and skills that are useful to know about. Um, so that Continuing opportunities for research in places like Thailand is an, is an important part of that. Um, and for me at the moment, those two are probably coming together, that interest in, in research with local communities in, in Asia and in, in education for social change um, through a project that we're putting together to take groups of students from within our, our master's course and enable them to live uh, in a, a rural village near this particular river, the Mun River in northeast Thailand, and spend time with, with the villagers and the NGO workers um, and the community leaders and learn about water issues in the community, um, learn about how access to water has changed over the years with development, um, learn about local cultural practices when it comes to rivers and water, and learn about the dam, the impact of the dam, and how people have responded to that. So learn about ways of, of organising um, that, are, that are often very innovative and have, have attracted attention from people right around the world. So bringing the, the, the research together with the, the, the education side of things um, is a very exciting prospect.